Hello my fellow 5 second skip buttons that missed the intro and where this build is going to be located. Today I'm starting off with, I've just got this uh, 6 uh, piece and then this 4 piece foundation. And then I've built it into the ground a little bit so we have this little bit of a hill. And that allows us to overlap the foundations as you see here. I've done this in another video which I will link uh, because there's something juicy about that one that I think you should check out. Now, when you have uh, the foundations overlapping other foundations, you can't snap them into place. You can only free place them. Uh, so if you want to do more than one, uh, like this, you're gonna they can't be touching each other. And so that led me to think, what if I incorporated these chunks into this build? So we're building a house, um, which you would have known had you not skipped ahead. But... Uh, we're just gonna be trying. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna try to do something uh, a little bit more modern. I I've done a lot of um, like rustic, immersive, scrappy builds on the channel, and sometimes I like to challenge myself to do something a little more clean. And I figure no one's gonna mind too much um, if I decide to do something clean for once, um, especially once. I've scraped this Cheeto dust off my fingertips. So what I'm going to do here is get this uh, staircase by itself and mushed up against this one. Now I have to move that, put this back here so that I can put this back here because you can't put a foundation underneath that foundation, silly. We have to do it in a specific order. So the original placement was just to get a general idea of where to place the stairs. And then you're going to spend about 15 to 20 days getting these three uh, foundations lined up uh, front to back, side to side, and up and down. This is very, very important because once we finish with the rest of the build, the orientation you have these at will determine how well the roof looks, which will be very obvious from outside. So, you know, a little bit of a... A chunky in the floor isn't a big deal, but when you see that chunky in the roof, um, it will make your mother cry. Unlike how she was feeling last night. Now, I'm using this little bit of a thing to measure the distance from side to side. Um, and then, of course, Graham stopped by to make sure that he could remind me that he has no plans that I want. As you can see, um, I've done my best to get these lined up, and um, now I'm going to delete those, and we're going to snap from the center one. And I'm using these striped foundation planks like I always do, because they're the easiest for my stupid little eyeballs to deduce if they're lined up or not. The orientation of those matters, because if you ever switch them out to something else, those will also be lined up. Now when we put this in, because we have that stair that was mushed off to the side, it lines up perfectly with the edge of that porch area. That's gonna be a porch, by the way. So now that you know that's a porch, I can now designate it as the porch area when I'm describing where to go. Now actually, I wanna double wall this here, so we need to not have these pieces here just now um, you're gonna want to double wall this first um, and when I say you gonna you're gonna want to uh, you're, you're gonna have to you don't want to do any of this stuff and also you can't double wall it when the foundations are like this um, and so we're just gonna be simple about it and you're gonna want to do this first because uh, we can move this over double it and then of course move it back because it's a doorway, you can move the foundation out from underneath it. Um, there are a lot of rules. There's more laws in the building mechanics than there are in the Holy Bible, unfortunately. And a lot of them make about as much sense, like that one about having special uh, braids in your hair or something. Well, um, now, the reason why I did it that way is you have to, if you leave just one foundation touching the stairs you won't be able to delete the stair away from it so this is the basic uh chunkiness of this i'm building with the barn wall set because i find it to be the most immersive and the best looking uh wall texture in the game it looks very realistic i would imagine 
uh, in the apocalypse that your barns are going to be redder than the ones that are in present day America. You know, because I think the priorities after we leave the vault is going to be repainting someone's butt fucking barn. That's what I've got on my list of things to do. Rebuild Appalachia, one moo moo cow at a time. Now, I've switched these out. The bottom ones are going to be window, but I'm going to switch those tops. Now, get rid of these. And speaking of tops, what did you think your mother thought last night? If you could just let me know, I've been trying to get a hold of her. Now, I'm going to put these rustic greenhouse walls down. Um, and I really like how these ones have these little open window things because they add a lot of detail. And anywhere that you can get some detail, some movement, something to break up the repeated patterns, um, you want to do that because it adds life to the build. And life is um, something that you may have not seen if you've been watching Todd Howard speaking. However, if you've managed to pry yourself away from the screen and touch what I think they call grass, uh, you can let me know what that was like, actually. I'm not sure. I don't go outside anymore. It's kind of peopley out there. I'm going to stack these safes up and wedge them in. These are going to cover up the holes. Um, kind of like how Bethesda tries to cover up the holes in their um, morals by giving us a couple of free items in the Atom Shop every three months. If you pay $12. Now, I'm going to be putting these, uh, these roofs down and... Right now, uh, you're not going to be able to do that exactly. So there's actually two things you could do. Uh, you could do this, which is the complicated way. Abandon mindset, then burn it. Or, and hear me out, put the roof in and then place those walls in. They will go in in that order. But I didn't think of that at the time. I was busy building. Now, a lot of times when you're building in this game... What you're doing isn't, like, at least for me, I'm not trying to be cl clever. I'm trying to build a little house. A little house here, and I can't. They don't let me. So, um, thanks. Uh, over here, this one, you will probably want to do this. Uh, switch it to that abandoned special mine one. This is the only wall that when you destroy it, it uh, goes away and turns into a yellow instead of having a broken texture like most of the other walls do. Anyway, uh, so you have to come up with all these workarounds just to be able to place things down in the way they probably should have been allowed to go down to begin with, and I'm not sure why that's the case. Uh, if you build in a custom world, you will know that it doesn't break the game to lower the building restrictions, and it leads to much better camps. So... The logic there is, I think, they must be clutching on to having some value with the custom worlds. Like, that's the only thing I can think of. Like, that's the only reason that people ever use them. So, if they make us able to build easily in adventure, then custom worlds will be a bust, you know, because they aren't already. Now, here, in order to fill in those little chunky chunks that you see down the middle, I'm going to be flipping these up. And also off because I'm getting a little angry when I build in this game. And that's because I'm feeling kind of silly. Um, also, if you start lagging out, leave the camp building mode. And also, if stuff is turning black and has a weird uh, texture uh, when it's destroyed, you can also leave the build menu and come back in and it should fix it. And now that these are burned, we can snap the walls or these are roofs, actually. Yeah, that's the ones on the, above us. And then the walls are the ones on the sides. Okay, I think I can... I've got that down. Also, um, in my spare time lately, I've been playing some LEGO Fortnite, which has been pretty fun. And uh, I think I'm going to upload a maybe a LEGO Fortnite build uh, to the channel sometime soon. Uh, let me know if you guys are interested in seeing that. Also, maybe... Um, uh, let me know if you guys have played that yet, because I found it to be a lot more fun than I was expecting it to. Now, I'm going to put these back into the, uh, what do you call them's, and repair this, and this, and all that stuff, whatever. And then, um, yeah. So, you see how flat the roof is? And that's only possible because of how flat we made those initial foundations. So, you want to be very careful. Take your time with her, like I did last night make sure that it's ready. Now I'm switching these out 
One of the reasons is so that hideous edge of the roof isn't visible. Um, and I'm just going to go with the uh, ranch house set for the majority of the build. And I'm going to do some astroturf here. I kind of want to go for like a little bit of a eco look. Now, I got rid of that middle one just to kind of open it up in here. You can leave it. You can also double wall easily in there because that's where everything's lined up on. For the ranch house windows, I'm going to have these wrap around here. Uh, this one, I'm going to switch out later to something else. Hit the one in the middle there. But uh, up here, I decided I wanted to add a little bit of a, a little um, riser to the roof. And originally, I was going to make it a lot bigger. Um, but after I built it, I said, hmm, that actually looks ass. So only you only have to do this for the ones in the middle okay just burn the ones in the middle now i took this out and what i'm trying to do is raise it up ever so slightly but because it's so far into the ground when i click on it it bulges not directly up and down the way i want it so i can't really control where it's going so what i did was i took this foundation and i brought it over here so snapping it to the side it'll be you know the same level up and down and I, I built over to a place where if we grab the foundation, it won't immediately pop up into the air. And then I can use the mouse wheel or the bumper buttons uh, to just shove it up by exactly the lip of the foundation. Because that's about as thick as a roof is. And what I'm trying to do is have a little bit of a skylight, but I want it to be kind of um, raised up slightly just to add a little bit more texture and depth to the build. So this is how I was able to do that by getting, um, like, it's perfectly square with the build, but it's also exactly up one foundation. Because we burn those roofs, we can just snap this through here. And again, uh, you can ignore the crisscrossing ones in the back. You only need to burn those three. Actually, you only need to really burn the, the two. Um, and then the third one I ended up not worrying about. So, uh, as you can see, I doubled everything. And all this chunkies, not really good looking. Um, but again, just do the two right there. Those two there. And then I uh, repaired them and then switched them to this greenhouse. Now, as you can see, on the edge, the some of the roofs have like a little lip thing. There's like a hole, a gap. And I want to get rid of that gap. So the first thing I'm going to do is... Oh, yeah, by the way, um, I'm going to get rid of these, which I had turned to glass as well. Um... And then I'm going to uh, burn the glass that I have here. And if you guys are keeping up, congratulations. I have no idea what's going on. I'm just uh, commenting on what I see. And what I see is a horrific... Now, anyway, if you look at some of these roofs, they have like this this rim on the side. Um, and what we're, what we're trying to do is get it so it's oriented the opposite way that the, that the roof pieces are already in there. Uh, because they... Basically, what I'm trying to do is cap off the end piece of the roof uh, because they, they they only have like lips on two sides. Uh, a lot of the new roofs have lips all around, and that's something else that you can ask your mother about. But this, as you can see, gives it a cap on the end, and then these ones going side to side will give it the cap on the sides so that we won't have weird slots, weird little gaps. Again, details matter. So now we have like a, a good capped off metal chunky sticking up. And then you can just get rid of this. You will have to switch it out to something like that so that you can get rid of it because those roofs will be floating otherwise, according to the Bible. And then, of course, you can get rid of this stuff and uh, you just put this back. I'm actually going to save one of these foundations over here, which will give me kind of a guide in case I need to, uh, you know, fix those roofs later, and then just fill this back in with some kind of wall. Yeah. Hello? Thanks. As you can see, the the cap is nice. There's no like little gaps that you would see otherwise. Now for the truly fun part, which you don't have to do. In fact, I recommend you don't, is I wanted to make this a little eco, a little rotten, you know, a little rubbish and old, but... You can't really put, like, foliage on the roof very well. 
Uh, so I thought the next best thing would be <clears throat> make some kind of like maybe uh, fake turf or maybe even some kind of weird grass, weird kind of moldy grass looking. So I'm taking these green carpets and because they're so thick, if you try to stack them or overlap them, they like pop up into the air and they look very frighteningly foolish. So what I have to do is you have to stack them and then drop merge them. And I will uh, mention, I'll go over drop merging in it later in the video if you're unfamiliar with it. Um, but basically, uh, this will allow them to all be flat and flush. And what you need to do is you need to uh, stack everything onto the newest carpet that you're adding to the stack. So whichever one you're adding, you drop, you pick up that one, you stack everything on that one, you drop merge it, and then you pick up the one you just did and then you place that whole pile on the newest one. And it's because, like, it's kind of backwards what you would think. Like, you would think you add a piece, then drop merge, add a piece, and drop merge. But no, you add everything to the new piece because what you're actually doing is shoving the bottom item up into what you already have. So basically, I'm doing this, and I'm going to do it to cover all the metal roof on this build. Sometimes you're going to need to drop merge it twice, sometimes three times. It depends. Just do it till it's flat. Uh, fill it out and then be happy. That's what I did except for the last part. Now this I'm going to put a uh, car in the driveway and it's up on cinder blocks and I want to shove that down in so it's just kind of sitting there um, on its wheels and maybe, you know, the, the wheels were, were stolen. Of course we are right next to the wayward so this camp will never be able to be placed because everyone will have their beginner camps here. Anyway, to drop merge this foundation stand like this next to it and grab it until it's green when you grab it and then look down and push it down. That didn't make any sense but luckily for you, I'm going to link a uh, video by Nuka Violet, and she goes over drop merging and also foundation merging in this video, which is called The Art of the Merge or something. What is it called? I don't remember exactly. You can't be asked to look it up, but I'm going to move this dying hedge. Why is it dying, you may ask? Well, it's the apocalypse. Now, if you put these in first, then you can snap these foundation tiles in after. And that's going to be really good, really helpful. And then you can put this this back, and of course it won't snap into where it, where it was. Why would it do that? Now inside here, I want to add like a little custom, uh, what do you call it? It's a coffee table. And uh, it's a little bit mid-century modern pretend. So what I'm going to do is uh, try to use... Uh, furniture that is that style of course we have none so I have to make it and of course I don't know what that looks like so don't worry about it anyway you can as you can see clearly uh, this will look perfectly not like a desk sunk into the foundation remember you will have to turn that wall piece into a doorway to get this foundation out uh, but once you put it back in there um, I'm gonna uh, shove a uh, a uh, fireplace up against this wall so I'm gonna I'm gonna turn the wall into a flatter wall than these ranch kit are which will allow me to shove this closer to the wall than I would be able to get just so it's flush with the wall and I'm gonna spend about 25 minutes getting this lined up I have a little bit of a problem with hand-eye coordination and also just my eyeballs in general uh, that's because I'm partially blind and I mean that spiritually as well as some of you may have noticed as the rage of the Bible has encouraged you to speak to me in the beloved love of God and how uh, I'm going to hell for saying bad stuff which is fine now I'm wondering why I would need to go there have you looked around now by burning these I can now snap this piece of, uh, what's it called, right onto here, except I can't. The reason why I can't in this scenario is because I built that too close to this back wall. Now, if you don't build it too close to the wall, you won't have to do this step, but if you do, uh, you can just do the magic wall, burn it, fix the stone fireplace that you will have accidentally burned in the process, and now you can snap it there. And now you can repair everything and replace it back to how it used to be and everything will be good and fine in this world except for everything that's terrible. Now, uh, we're going to fold these back down and now uh, because we spent so long lining it up, in fact three days, that's why it's taken a while to get this video out, uh, there is of course the fireplace lined up pretty well inside this glass chunky. 
Now I'm going to be uh, sh uh, doing another drop merge, and that's because I'm working on the kitchen. There are a lot of things in this build that I didn't show building. A lot of stuff I built and then undid. You might see in the background some stuff that isn't there later that I decided against. So if you see that stuff, obviously you can do it yourself in your own video. Or in your own build. And I mean, guys, you could make a video on it, but that would be kind of weird. I know that, like, because I already made the, the, the build and made a video for it, okay? Like, you can definitely use the tutorial and build the camp yourself. It just gets a little sketchy after you start making your, your own video about it. You know, I don't remember, what is that word again? Plagiarism? Anyway, I'm going to bring this inside here and um, snap this here. This is like a little stove top that I invented. Uh, I invented the stove. I've never seen it before. And that's looking pretty good. I'm going to put the, uh, the, yeah, those. That was magical how quickly I did that. Now, what I'm trying to do is uh, cover up that gap because I want to... I want to use like the depth of these counters with the style of the thinner ones. So I'm just kind of like covering it up. But in the edges, of course, you get like this weird gap. So I'm going to have to double it up to cover up that gap. So I'm going to burn everything except for the thing I'm trying to burn and then try again and burn it then in that time. And this will allow me to feel the rage that I've been brewing inside me for several years, pushing it downward until it overflows and I finally snap. Um, and uh, then we can, of course, put the pieces in uh, where we wanted them to. Um, with these things, when you're building, you will uh, find that if you click the square button, what is that on your other uh, games? I don't know. So some uh, uh, one of your other buttons, it changes it from snapping to free place, which will allow you to shove it into places. Otherwise, it'll be red. Um, much like my rage. That's just, I'm not angry. I'm pl I'm building in Fallout 76, and there is a slight difference. Yeah, no way, actually. So um, just make sure it's not sticking through the wall once you repair it, which it obviously is. But I'm not gonna redo it. That'd be way too much work. Just, uh, yeah. So now that we've done that, you can obviously repair it. And as you can see, there's literally no flickering whatsoever. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to cover it up with something, don't worry. And then, of course, just over here, do the same thing. Uh, shove that in there now that that's broken. And you'll be able to repair all this stuff and waste all your aluminum, uh, which is really fun to farm more of. So that's going to be good. Now, up here, um, uh, a good way to get some power in the build without having to look at it is to take this vault tech generator and put a little conduit on it now if i were to burn this chunk here it would turn yellow and i wouldn't be able to put that where it is because it would be intersecting with the the bro broken bit but if i burn this thing down here which is holding that other piece up the other piece will disappear into the ether what is that word i don't know and then we can place it and because there's a roof here, of course, we can stand it on top of the roof. And then once we go to repair this, of course, um, and also the wall that got broken, it will come back to us, covering up the foundation, uh, the generator, and uh, powering the build or whatever. So if if I pick this up, you can actually see that generator is in there, and it works. I have light, not that light though. Get get rid of that. Another cool thing that I found that I didn't s expect to work so well is the controls for free cam motor terrible. And also, uh, I wanted to sink this down in, and so I just drop merge this a bit because I wanted the pot to be on the counter, but not the like the wire mesh that makes people look hor uh, horrified when they behold it. Um, so then I I uh, did this, and I think because it snaps into place it let me just shove it here i think if it was like an item that didn't snap i would have to have burned that second counter but that looks really good and it was surprisingly easy to put there um, and then here i've seen a lot of people do this uh to make like a cutting board and um i thought it was a nice touch so let's add a cutting board as well uh not that i've ever used one of those but um like you don't need a cutting board to microwave ramen you know what i mean like you don't need one so never bothered with one but anyway uh let's just shove this back into place i did need to make those walls the thinner version because again the um 
the ranch walls are pretty fat and so they intersect. Now these grass pieces are there all the time and you can't get rid of them. Uh, so the only things that I know of that bulldoze those kinds of grass are carpets. And of course the carpets that we have available are horrific and not ones that I'm wanting to use. Like this one, who the hell wants a carpet that looks like that, Billy? But as you can see, it bulldozes it. And um, uh, let's move these out of the way as well. And so obviously uh, moving this does bulldoze the grass. And when you pick it up and move it, the grass is still gone until you place something n near it. And then the grass comes back up. The grass is ruining everything and I hate it so much. So I thought um, I'm going to try to figure out a way to cover up the grass, but not have to look at whatever's covering up the grass. You know, I, I don't want that carpet to be visible. It's hideous. Um, and it ha there has to be a carpet there covering that grass up. So I wanted to get a carpet drop merged on this conduit, but I can't place the carpet on top of that conduit because it doesn't have support. So what I've done is I've, I'm going to drop merge it into this uh, foundation, which, so just the nub is sticking up. And now because the nub is sticking up, I can place a rug on top of this. And it doesn't say it doesn't have support because the, the foundation is close enough to it that it thinks it can it can be there. So now it's being supported by the pylon. And don't worry if you can't grab the pylon because um, we can reverse merge with a foundation merge to like kind of stick it back up. You just raise it up instead of lowering it. And then you can grab the pylon. And then, of course, uh, this is now being held up by the pylon. So then what I want to do is drop merge this down. So the goal here is to get the the carpet to be supported by something that's tall and thin that when destroyed uh, will not have a huge hitbox for people to run into and, and repair uh, that will be invisible. And also importantly that I can put furniture around without it taking up space. Because the rug is being supported by the conduit, when I destroy the conduit, the rug will fully disappear. Rugs are not destroyable in the game. So the question is, does a destroyed invisible rug still block off the grass? Because if it does, this will be a solution. And, and of course, the rug won't have any collision or hitbox because it won't be destroyed. It will be disappeared. It will still be there blocking the grass, I hope. I, I, I hope. Because when we do this with generators... We still have power from them, so I was hoping uh, this would also still work in some way. <clears throat> so far, so good. The grass is still gone. Let's place a stool and see if it comes back. And it doesn't. The, the invisible carpet strikes again. Now, because uh, we use this tall, skinny pylon, we are able to get our furniture back where it was. And because I'm placing it in between these two chairs as well... Uh, it's, first of all, not going to be in the way of anything else I was going to have. And also, it won't be, like, in the way when people come through to accidentally repair it as much. Because they're not going to be walking directly over the chairs, probably. And if they see something pop up and go to look back, they might just think, Oh, that was the chair prompt telling me to sit down. Uh, because uh, we are very close to the wayward, there's going to be a lot of noobs in the area. Uh, let's just stick this back. Because uh, they're snapped, they're pretty easy to get back into place here. Um, and uh, the stools, everything can go back here. And, and the grass is gone. That makes such a huge difference to not have that stupid shit sticking through your camp. And, uh, and obviously the pylon isn't visible when you're out of it. But this is the finished product. Uh, let's look at the whole camp with our own two eyes. Um, as I said... People coming down from the wayward, they, they might see this cement truck, which I wanted to have for the cement, but I didn't want it to be a uh, part of the build. So I have it kind of behind this tree here because that kind of like separates it into a separate plot so that people don't assume that it's like part of this shit over here. So it's a fully different thing, but I still get my special concrete. And the way that I'm powering it up is something that I did in my last build video, which is... Um, I just took something, in this case a rock, and I put the power and the uh, attached wire on top of the rock, and then I drop merged it down till it was below the rock, 
and then it um, gives power to that. I did the same thing over here with the cooler, which I need to have in my camp uh, so that my food doesn't rot when I switch camps. I mean, it still does rot, but that's because... Well, don't worry about it. Now, over here, uh, I did the exact same thing with the most important things. This is my mule build, so I need to have the ammo storage box as well as the scrap box readily available underneath these special leaves. So what I did with this was I put the ammo box, drop merged it down, then put the scrap box, and then drop merged them down together. And so they're right here under the leaves, invisible. But if we look at the camp, I, I really like the angle and how the structure looks. We can't really build triangles in this game, so this kind of gives us a an idea of how that would feel if we could by by suggesting a triangular shape um, even though it is just squares overlapping at an angle uh, and then if we come over here I have a little bit of a drop merged bunny thing which is kind of like a hatch of some kind and then the waste acid collector for the for the thing again I wanted to have some like uh, you know vegetation feeling so stuff that would feel yummy for that again in here with the window slot it looks very good i'm gonna open that up come inside and uh so yeah i i don't know how to decorate interiors okay so i've been trying to get better at it um vapid valentine uh she's one of my best friends and she has um helped me a lot in terms of um just learning to look at things differently when I'm decorating, uh, looking at lighting differently than I used to, and also paying attention to like keeping themes uh, going in the same direction. I, I've, I'm very good at building like scrappy, immersive clutter stuff because that doesn't really have a theme. You just put garbage in a heap. You know, anything can be garbage. Um, but keeping things of a certain theme is a lot more difficult. Also, I built this special table here. I wouldn't recommend it. And also, I forgot something that you need to remember. These three foundations here, you can't pick them up and go outside and then try to put that foundation back in, which is what I did because I sunk them into the foundation. Because if you move these three foundations, you can't put them back. You can't snap them back into place. What I had to do was take these walls off, take the foundation off in there, and then free place this back exactly where it was so that I could build it and hope to God it lined up. And somehow I was able to, but I did have an aneurysm doing it. The end result, of course, is an underwhelming table and uh, some chairs sitting around it in a confusing manner. Up here, uh, so I wasn't sure what to do with this space up here. So what I did was nothing. I did nothing with that space. It's empty. Okay, I didn't put anything on the walls. How do I decorate that? Um, of course, uh, there are obviously always going to be room for improvement when you're looking at something. And of course, this is visible in build mode. But when you're not in build mode, it's not there. And as I mentioned before, people walking through here, they're not going to be walking directly over the chair. So I'm hoping a lot of people, they're not going to walk into that and like, oh, I need to repair this guy's stuff. You know how people are very helpful, especially because we're near the way where there's a lot, a lot of noobs. They just click on the buttons that are prompted them, you know, so they will repair it if they get a chance. Uh, bless their little hearts. Um, but again, I'm hoping those chairs will help kind of block that. And if it does happen and they repair it, it's not a big deal. To burn that pylon again that's a that's why i wanted to use something that was tall so that the uh flame trap would hit it easier um but i really like how using skylights in the lighting over here like there's really good lighting in this uh house just from the sun itself i really like how open and airy it feels over here is a bathroom uh of course lots of privacy no one's going to be watching you at all I made this custom little dresser thing it's pretty basic in here I'll be honest uh, and I that's well some of you may spend hours in the bathroom so you have a better idea of what they look like and you can let me know in the comments what kind of uh, epiphanies you've had now in the bedroom again I wasn't paying as much attention as I could have to what a bedroom looks like I was a little bit busy there um, and that's again something you can ask your mother about but 
I did have this idea that, oh, I got this new bed, I should build it, and it doesn't match the theme, but that's okay, because don't worry about it, okay? And so that's, also, I'm using this one single light to light up this room area, and is that a curtain? Why, why is that there? I didn't build that, that's not supposed to be there, don't worry about it. So, that's the bedroom, very small, kind of simple. Uh, in fact, this whole uh, uh, build is... You know, it's a small floor pan plan, and it's very simple. It's, uh, but I really, really like how it turned out. I think it's, it, it feels very inviting. It feels very warm and cozy in here. And uh, I'm not usually very good at interior decoration, so um, I feel, I feel good about how it turned out. I really like how the uh, astroturf roof turned out. I think it adds a really nice touch. I really like, in general how this build looks, and you guys can let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my patrons and channel members for your support. Uh, thank you guys so much. It really means a lot to me. Uh, the, the, uh, the amount of support I've gotten has been truly overwhelming. I appreciate all the kind comments that you guys leave as well. Um, and also, uh, I do stream on Twitch. I'm going to be starting that up again now that we're into the new year. Uh, so give me a follow. The link for that will be in the description as well as the link for the Discord, which you should hop into. I'll see you guys in the next video.